for the record, did Wi Fi's funeral leap this Boy Who Cry Wolf mixtape? Yeah, 100%. All right, so you got to explain what happened. Why? Well, as I, as I explain the story, it, it's no disrespect towards anybody when I say this. You feel me? Like, I, I fuck with my label as a whole. They're, they're all cool, and I know they want, like, the, the best interest for me. Um, just, like, at the time, uh, you know, like, the communication just wasn't the best at all. Um, there was a lot of things that I didn't know at all, you know what I mean? Especially on their end with the efforts that they were doing as well. Um, I was under the impression the whole time that, you know, they weren't putting the forth the effort that I wanted them to. It, like, it was just like, all right, like I signed and like, now what? Like, now what am I going to do? Like, um, what is the plan? You know what I mean? Like, I know what I need to do, but like, what are we doing as like a whole? Like, you know what I mean? Communication just wasn't there, like on the best level, even though I'm on my end, because, you know, I was just so fed up with little bullshit that I would see. So I would just, you know, just be like, all right, fuck it. I'm not going to talk to them or I'm not going to communicate with them. And um, it started off because, you know, I wanted to release Wrist Motion as like the first single for Boy or Cry Wolf. Some industry shit happened. I got mad. And then they told me that I could release it on SoundCloud at least, you know what I mean? Because I was like, yo, like, you know, we've been, this record's been like hyped on the internet for like almost like five months now. And like this is like my most like demanded record. Like we have to release this shit. So um, there was like a problem on releasing it like on all the other like platforms and shit like that, which I, I don't know exactly like what the problem was. So I asked them, all right, so can I at least like release it on SoundCloud? And they were like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I tried to release it on SoundCloud and it just, just I don't know why I just wouldn't release. It was like I guess like a copyright issue or something like that. And then um, so I just got fed up. I was like, all right, bet I can drop the song, like, and this is like the only thing that I'm really asking, like, you know what I mean? I've been letting y'all do whatever it is that y'all needed to do. Anytime y'all told me that, oh, we're trying to do this, we're trying to do that, like, feel me? I let y'all rock, I, and I can't do at least one thing that I want to do. I'm dropping the whole fucking tape. Fuck that shit, cause like, it makes no sense. Like, my fans were demanding for the tape, and we weren't really doing anything for the tape. Little did I feel personally. Now me and my label, we're like, we're a okay now. We're, yeah, we're great. I felt like at that time, like my label should have just like trusted me a little bit more when I'm telling them, all right, like we need to start releasing things now. Da -da -da -da, blah, 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 blah. But I feel like they get it now. Well, Boy Cry Wolf was the first project that I actually took my time with. I used to lie to my mom a lot. So she would always call me like a Boy Cry Wolf. And uh, I felt like that's how I was represented in the industry. Because, you know, a lot of the things from like Black Heart Revenge to When Hell Falls, a lot of those records are like, you know, real great records, but very effortless, you know what I mean? Because I either made the project in two weeks or it took me like a couple months just to make it. I feel like my fans are so used to me doing effortless shit that it's kind of like a boy who cried wolf situation. It's like, oh, he's saying that he's trying, but like, you know, he's always, so I just felt like it just correlated just like the right way. The message is just like, this is my sound. This is my, like this is solidifying a sound that I'm gonna like evolve with and create from, and I'm here to stay. Like I'm not one of these waves that like come goes. Like I'm here. Like I'm solidifying my shit. Fuck everything. How did you meet Chris? Cause he played a huge role in this project. I met Chris. Chris was actually a fan of my music before he was like like anything involved with me musically. Like he was just a fan and just loved my music. You know what I mean? So I hit you up on Twitter. No, nah, it was, well, yeah, he did hit me up on Twitter. I didn't know he was making beats. I met him in 2015 at this uh, festival takeoff landing in Tampa, and I was in the 7-Eleven with Max P, and we were, like, both fucked up. And I remember this short little fat kid <laughs> comes up to me. He's like, yo, why, why, like, I fuck with you heavy, bro, da 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 da, -da. Take a picture with him. And then uh, a year later, he sends me, like, a beat, and this is when I'm making Black Heart Revenge, and he produced Highway to Hell. So like, and that was the last song that I recorded before I put the project out. And then like, I like from hearing that beat, I was like, yeah, I'm, like I know I'm gonna fuck with this shit. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like it's really good. And then um, the thing about Chris though is that he's listened to my music so much that he's like, this is what you're missing. You know what I mean? Like this is what you need to do. Like me and you can really like make a sound. Like if it if it wasn't for like his brain power at all, the project wouldn't sound any way like how it sounds at all. So like. From him being a fan, he already knew, like, all right, this is what we need to do because this is, like, what you're missing. 
I got hate on my face just because, like, I grew up, like, just hating a lot of things. So it just explains me as a person. Trying to evolve out of that as a person, like, it's hard because you're so used to being in this negative bubble or just wrapping yourself around this negative energy. And that, like, when you're doing something, like, doing positive shit feels weird to me. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I'm not trying to, like, focus on, like, oh, I feel out of character doing something positive or da-da-da. Like, I'm actually trying to just, like, better myself and, like, not think about that shit. How bad was that crowd surfing situation? I mean, how 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 worried were you at that moment? You know what's crazy? When I was getting jumped, I wasn't even worried, like, at all. It was more like, I knew I couldn't do anything, you feel me? So it's like more of like a, all right, they're going to stop. <laughs> I know one of them going to get tired. Like, they're going to stop. <laughs> like, eventually, these niggas is going to stop. But, uh, yeah, my head was split open. Uh... I had a concussion. They like gave me so many like other shit. I had like a lot of like internal bruising, all this shit. But like, I wasn't even like really sweating that shit. You know what I mean? Like at all. None of the, honestly, I kind of thank God I got jumped. Cause like that shit helped my career out a lot. It made people look at me more. They were like, oh, this kid just got jumped. Who the fuck is he? And then like they just searched up my music. Like, I gained a lot of new fans from getting jumped. Be and on top of that, like, how it played out, it was, like, that shit was whack. From, like, rumors and stuff that I heard from people, I heard that the most that I could say is that it had nothing to do with me. And it was just on some shit where it's, like, we can't get so-and-so or this and this and that, so we're going to get whoever close. I remember vividly how it was. I didn't kick nobody in the face at all. I crowd surfed that way specifically for a reason. There's a reason why I do that because when I'm going into you, you're feeling my back. You're not feeling my legs. My legs flip over. And when I flip over with my legs, I hold them up like this so I don't kick nobody in the face like at all. So I knew it wasn't because I kicked somebody in the face. Because like as soon as I did that, people were holding me up. And then out of nowhere, I looked this way and I just, I didn't even, I didn't even see the person coming from the back, all I feel is just a big ass forearm <laughs> knock me down. Like anybody that knows me at like any shows, that's the first thing that I'm doing. Like I'm cannonballing and like swan song, I'm into the crowd all day. And it's not for me to be like, oh fuck you guys, you guys are peasants. <laughs> da 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 da. It's like, nah, bro, like turn the fuck up, like show some energy. You didn't just pay all this money to come and stare at me. Like feel the experience. I'm trying to give you an experience. It's not by like kicking you in the face or jumping on you, it's just doing something out of the norm.